Welcome back. Welcome back, people. Thank you guys for tuning in. Hey, we've had some good traction on our show. Uh, I'd like to mention that, hey, on our Facebook page, we're up to over 600 followers. So thank you guys so much. You know, we are, um, you know, this is, you know, going to be the show for all Powell people. Uh, sounds of the Powell Grounds right here, here in Concho, USA. Uh, that's where we um, like actually bring this show to life. I want to give a good shout out to a Hawk Hardigo. Does all the hard work. I just don't do anything. I just kind of show up and do my gig, and I just leave. He has to do all the editing, but I want to give a big shout out to Hawk Hardigo for putting all this together. He is the mastermind. He is the one who actually gave us the show um, to kind of put it together for all the Powell people out there. So, but once again, thank you for everyone for tuning in. To uh, Sounds of the Power Grounds. If you go to the Facebook page, you know, definitely check it out. You know, we have all the power flyers up there. I make it real simple. Uh, you know, what I did is I, I posted them up and then I actually categorized them. So if you go to photos, you go to all, and then from there you can see every single month. And I got it broke down that you can actually go to each month and see what's going on that month, you know. And so everything's in there. I wouldn't, I wasn't able to actually get them like numberized, you know, like, uh, but they're all in there uh, by month. So if you go to June, you go to March and stuff like that, it'll just show all the Powell Flyers in there. Um, but if you have any Powell Flyers, definitely let me know. Shoot me an email, jrlonelodge at g email.com or send send me like uh you know on facebook send me a message on there you know if i haven't blocked you you know like send it to me uh but you know it's I was, today i got a special guest today i've got my my oldest my favorite oldest daughter emma lone lodge and i know she hates that joke she's like dad <laughs> Why do, why do you always say that? You know, I'm your only oldest daughter. I'm like, yeah, but it, to me, it's funny. But, you know, that's it's she's actually here. You know, I'm very I'm very excited to bring her on the show. So I say hi, Emma. Hello. <laughs> you got any friends you want to give a shout out to? Uh, not right now. <laughs> <laughs> and so Emma is, you know, she's a fancy shawl dancer. She uh she's danced everything from fancy shawl to jingle kind of done a little bit of you know, southern cloth here and there uh she's an accomplished motocross rider it's you know it scares the hell out of me these days but you know she she's actually pretty good at it you know and you know funny thing was you know i grew up racing motocross and riding and whatnot and you know when she was i think what were you like seven yeah i think so yeah seven i surprised her and i got her a little bit tiny motorcycle and it was the cutest thing uh the little thing had training wheels and whatnot and, you know, she took to it like a fish to water. And, you know, she used to go around and around and around and around in circles and stuff. And then, you know, she, you know, I didn't tell her to one day. I was like, okay, uh, you actually have a couple different gears. You know, you know, you can try it out in second gear and then, you know, you can go from there. But, you know, don't go past second gear because you got another gear. Anywho, so she, we're out in the parking lot and I see this thing just hauling it. I mean, she's just getting it. And I'm like, what in the heck? And then she comes over, takes a break, and you know, we go, and then her grandmother shows up and whatnot. And I can hear her talking to grandma. You know, she's like, hey, grandma, grandma, guess what? And she's like, what? And I hear her from a distance. She's like, I put it in third gear, but don't tell my dad. <laughs> so yeah, she she's kind of a daredevil, everybody. But I, I want to introduce, you know, my my daughter, Emma Lone Lodge. She is Southern Arapaho, Southern Cheyenne as well. And also, she is also other tribes from her mom, you know, Oneida from your mom? Yeah. 
Yeah, that's right. And currently she resides, you know, in Green Bay, Wisconsin. What uh, high school do you currently go to? Uh, Southwest. Yeah, yeah. And she's my traveling buddy, you know, like uh, um, she is, you know, being a Marine, I've never actually had long hair. Uh, she actually is my um, w- one person that I've actually had to learn how to braid for. So dad's braids are getting better. You know, I'm, I'm not the best out there, but I'm getting better, huh, Em? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. I'm doing my very best. Doing my very best. But you know, it's you know, she's my road dog. You know, she's uh, currently started sewing and stuff like that. And she's an accomplished artist. You know, I think I had my day for a while. Uh, I can't compete to her art skills right now. She is really good. Um, but you know, someday, some way, you know, maybe if we bring back War Child, she'll take over the art on that. You know, maybe she'll have her own clothing company soon. You know, we're kind of working things out. But you know, we'll see how things go in the future. Um, you excited for the summer? Summertime? Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to hit some powers, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then get you back on the treadmill, get you running, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's your favorite thing, huh? It's like, Dad, I don't really want to run. And I'm like, Yeah, get on the treadmill. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we'll have some fun this summer. But, you know, she's going to be tuning in with me, you know, so like this is her first podcast. So um, thanks everyone for tuning in. Uh, right off the bat, we're going to get in some Powell flyers, see what's going on. This is the end, the very last weekend in March. So I'm going to throw out like all the Powells that are going on in March. And then from there, we'll kind of fill it out, see what we got going on in April as well. So, but I want to thank everyone out there for tuning in and actually sending me Powell flyers. I do appreciate it. You know, as soon as I get them, I post them as fast as possible. So uh, let's see what we got so far. Okay. Going just like I mentioned, going to my photos and I go to all, then I can go to April. And I think I got four more Powells here in all March. Let's see. I can do this right. There it is. There's March. Okay, so right off the bat, you know, this end of the month, that's going to be March 30th and 31st. That We have the Seven Arrows Powell. This one's all the way in Boise State University. Uh, looks like Saturday. Uh, grand entry is going to start at 12 p.m. And then uh, once again at 7 p.m. And then Sunday, you got one at 11 p.m. Uh, looks like uh, your host drum is going to be Walking Buffalo from Saskatchewan, Canada. Uh, after that, you got MC Alec Bluff. Uh, and then arena director is going to be Marlon Kicking Woman Senior. Uh, head singer is going to be, uh, it looks like Kaylin Dane. And then head woman is going to be uh, Nadine Delgado. So that'll be a good one up there in Boise State. Boise State, Idaho. That's uh, home of the potatoes, huh, Em? <laughs> Uh, we actually, you know, we've been up to uh, up to Idaho before, and she was cracking up because we were driving by, and she's like, and she just couldn't stop laughing. I'm like, what's going on? She's like, Dad, Dad, they got a potato museum. <laughs> <laughs> she thought that was the most funniest thing ever. I was like, yeah. And then I found out actually, if you go to the museum, they actually give you a sack of potatoes when you actually um, finish the tour. So, but we didn't check it out. But maybe next time, huh, man? Yeah. Uh, next up, you know, we got uh, March 30th. Uh, we actually have the Kiowa Tribal Princess uh, Kylie Soodle. Looks like we're going to have an honor dance, and that will be all the way in Carnegie, Oklahoma, March 30th. So that's this weekend. <clears throat> Uh, Gore Dance is going to start at 1 p.m. And then uh, 5 uh, five p.m. is going to be dinner. 6 p.m. is going to be family special. And 7 p.m. is going to be tail dance and war dance to follow. So that would be a good one. That's going to be for the honor um, honor dance for the Kiowa Tribal Princess Kylie Soodle. And that is this, uh, this 30th. After that, we do actually have, let's, let's go back and forth. All the way down in Texas, uh, the tribe of the Alabama Cushada. Give a shout out to all my friends down there in Alabama Cushada land. Hey, thank you guys for tuning in. You guys are awesome down there. I do miss you guys. Um, so the Alabama Cushada are going to have their children's powwow Saturday, March 30th, all the way down there in Livingston, Texas. Looks like your uh, host drum is going to be um, <clears throat> Molly Trail. Uh, host Northern Drum is going to be a Buffalo Boy. Head Gore Dance is going to be Jason Williams. Head Man is going to be Cody Castillo. Uh, head Lady is going to be uh, Tahani Williams. Head Judge is going to be Quana White Thunder. And Arena Director is going to be Roland Thompson. And then you have your uh, 23, 24 uh, Tribal Princess uh, Kawana Williams as well. So that'd be a good one. The tribal, uh, the <clears throat> uh, Alabama Cushada Tribal Powell down there, well, Children's Tribal Powell down in Livingston, Texas this weekend. And then after that, let's see. 
that looks like it's about it for uh, March. <clears throat> Excuse me there. All right, so we're going to go through a couple of piles here in April. April coming up. Now, I apologize. These are kind of be out of the order, uh, but I'm going to try to do them as best I can. Uh, so April 20th to 21st, you have the First Nations University of Canada power all the way up in Saskatchewan. Uh, I mean, Regina, Canada. I mean, I miss those Canadian powers. We were just talking about that. Uh, it's been a while since, you know, I kind of gone up there and had my Tim Hortons, but, you know, my Timmy's and, and also, you know, my breakfast sandwiches up there. But I do miss it. You know, one of these days we'll make it back up there. Uh, maybe this time I'll cross the border hunt him. <laughs> yeah. So we got this one. <clears throat> this one's going to actually have, let's see, you have Tiny Tots, Golden Age, uh, 55 and older, senior women's uh, um, and men, 35, uh, 54, and then you also have junior men's and 18 to 34. Uh, you know, prize money's pretty good on this one, man. It's going to be uh, all the way from 1,864 up in Canada. So we cross that border, and that's when, you know, they get you because, you know, like money transfers over. But yeah, it's going to be a good one. Like, uh, that's going to be April 20th and 21st, uh, First Nations University of Canada in Regina. Also, right off the bat, you know, on April 6th, you have Thunderbird Casino in Norman, Oklahoma. Uh, this is going to be, let's see, uh, Miss, and, Miss and Junior Miss OIB Princess Honor Powell in Thunderbird uh, Casino in Norman, Oklahoma. Uh, it's going to be, let's see... Yeah, there's that one. And then after that, you're going to have the second annual Shine and Rappo Tribal Youth Power Benefit Dance, April 14th, here in Concho ERC Building. Uh, Gore Dance is going to start at 3 p.m. Supper is going to be at 5 and Dance to Follow as well. MC is going to be Isaac Rhodes. Head uh, singer is going to be Marcus Watan. Head man dancer is going to be Ben uh, Ches Chesina. Uh, head lady is going to be Sonia Hoffman. Head little, little boy is going to be Touch the Cloud with Tan. Uh, head little girl is going to be Ly Miley, Myla Rose. And co host is going to be Starhawk Society. AD is going to be Sh Ro uh, Ross Sharp. So that'll be the second annual Shine and Rappel Tribal Youth Powwow here in Concho, Oklahoma at the ERC building April 14th. And we got another big one coming up. Uh, we also have the University of Oklahoma 110th Annual Spring Powell Saturday, April 20th, the Lloyd Noble Center. That is the home of the Sooners. Uh, MC on that one is going to be none other than uh, Ruben Littlehead. Uh, after that, you have two MCs. You also have... Dang it. Let's see. Uh, MC is going to be walk, uh, Joaquin Hamilton, uh, Young Bird, Arena Direction, OJ o o Little Creek, a Little Cook. Uh, head chord dancer is going to be Sydney Topa. Head singer is going to be Kenneth Kozat. Uh, no, none, uh, head Northern Drum is none other than Northern Cree. So Northern Cree is going to be all the way down here in Sooner Country. That's going to be pretty good. Head man dancer is going to be none other than Silas White Buffalo. Uh, head, little, head lady is going to be uh, Erica Moore. Uh, and then head judge is going to be Clifton Goodwill. Um, so that's going to be a good one. That's going to be a mover and shaker in Sooner Country. That's going to be the University of Oklahoma uh, Powell, the 110th Annual Spring Powell, Saturday, April 20th. Also on the agenda, we also have, let's see, the Pawnee Nation Princess Dance. That's going to be Sunday, April 14, 2024. Uh, that's going to be at the Pawnee Nation's uh, campground. Um, that's, let's see, your head woman on that one's going to be Karen Rice. Uh, head man dancer is going to be Alec Kent. Master of Ceremony is going to be Adrian Spotted Horse. Head singer is going to be Taylor Moore. Arena director is going to be Ryland Moore. And the water boy is Andy Pratt and Isaac Pratt. So that'll be a good one. That's up there in Pawnee Country. Pawnee Nation Princess Dance Saturday, April 14th. We got, let's see, time for one more. Let's go through here. Let's see. Okay, so benefit dance for Unseen Silverhorn uh, and Baby Julian Lee Watan. Um, this is going to be at the Comanche Complex Gym, Lawton, Oklahoma, Saturday, April 6th. All gore dance is going to be from 2 to 11. 11 p.m. Supper at 5.30. Your head staff, MC, is going to be Edmund Navicoy. Head uh, singer is going to be Kevin uh, Sovo. Head lady dancer is going to be Tammy uh, Colletti Batiste. Head man uh, gourd dancer is going to be Louis Cozette. And head little girl is uh, Jillian uh, Epinette. 
And then Head Little Boy is going to be Dominic uh, Gutierrez, and AD is going to be uh, Sears Silverhorn. So that'll be our powwows for, you know, the end of March and starting into April. Um, we're going to go through a little bit more in April because there's a lot of them. Um, I just want to touch base on, you know, like uh, some of the ones. But, man, there's going to be some good rockin' powwows next month here in April, uh, especially over at Sooner Country at OU. Man, that's going to be a good one. Uh, Northern Korea is going to be coming down, so that place is going to be rocking. But um, here within a little bit, you know, we're going to bring up some guests on here. You know, like I said, you know, this show is all about you. We're bringing the best of the best powwow news and uh powwow drama hey just kidding uh but you know we're gonna bring on like some of the best guests out there you know some that you love some that you know you envy and sometimes you know you don't like but i'm bringing them on anyway but hey you know thanks for tuning in here with sounds of the power grounds i'm gonna take a little break all right, people, we are back. This is JR Lone Lodge with Sounds of the Power Grounds. You know, we got a bunch of guests that we've got planned coming on here. So, but if you have anyone that, you know, you want me to interview, you want me to shake down, definitely send them my way. Send me a message either on Facebook or, you know, JR Lone Lodge at gmail.com. Be like, hey, I want to check this guy out. Or, hey, can you get a hold of this person? Or, you know, like just send them my way. Say, I mean, that way maybe I can reach out and hopefully get them on the air. Um, you know, if they pay their phone bill, maybe we can get them connected, you know. So if not, we have to use you know facebook warrior style the wi-fi <laughs> warrior uh but you know we'll see if we can get him on the show but um without further ado we got um, a new guest up here he's got, we're gonna be calling all the way to canada this time so hopefully hopefully my bill is gonna be okay on this one let's just check this out real quick so there we go there we go so it is working <laughs> hello Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, good morning, Hello. brother. Hey, right on. Good morning. Yeah, this is JR Lone Lodge with Sounds of the Power Ground. You are on our air, man. It's good talking to you. You're coming all the way from Concho, USA, which is all the way down here in small, small town in Oklahoma. Uh, and you are currently, whereabouts are you right now? Yeah, I'm also in a small town called uh, North the Battleford, Saskatchewan. Oh, right on, right on. People, this is none other than Patrick McSoon. Uh, and I, I'm sorry, did I say that last name right? I always remember to ask about that one. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty close. Uh, mitt swing. It's a, almost like, a, you know, you put on a mitt on your hand, mitt and a, a swing at a park. Mitt swing. Oh, okay, uh, all right. Yeah, for as long as I've known you, I just know you as Patrick. You know, it's like I never truly really tried to actually step out there and hit that last name. I'm like, oh dang, man! I'm sorry. As soon as I saw it, I was like, oh man, I really never really actually actually know how to say that. <laughs> well, Patrick, he comes all the way from the Makwe uh, Sigagin, uh, um First Nations tribe up there in Plains. Uh, he's also Plains Cree, uh, all the way up in Canada. How's Canada right now? How's the weather up there, man? Right now, it's like really deceiving because you got all the aesthetics. You got a blue sky, the sun is shining, but it's like actually really cold up. It's minus 12 uh, yeah. mm -hmm. degrees Celsius right now, so uh, pretty chilly right now. Yeah, I've been up there, man, I think in November one time. I think I went to, uh, what is it? Uh, I forgot one of those Powell's up there. And I think it was like negative, almost negative 20. And they're like, oh, yeah, it's just warming up. I'm like, are you kidding me? There's no freaking way I would up here. <laughs> it's like negative 20, bro. I mean, I'm from Oklahoma. It's, it gets cold, but it don't get that that, that damn cold, bro. Uh, and then we went to try to go Powell. Man, my knees are locking up. And I was like, God, I can't even shake it. And then the other thing is, you know, uh, what was it that, um, uh, was it that, that one Powell we danced on a uh, hockey rink? Um, but you know, they had put, you yeah. know, like the boards and stuff above the hockey rink. You could still feel like the coldness just, you know, it was just generating from the floor. I mean, I could still feel it and it jacked up my ankles, it jacked up my knees. And uh, I was like, I was trying to, you know, just get warmed up for that contest. And I was trying to run around, run around. It's just, it just no avail, man. It's just, you guys are on a different level on your power arenas up there, man. I'm just, we just don't dance on the hockey rinks down there, brother. <laughs> <laughs> but uh hey man no, yeah mm -hmm. but uh yeah that's just I'd some yeah yeah 
But I, I need to come up there and hit one of those, you know, one of your spring piles when you're just out there, out there, and you know the outside. I really would like to do that because the, the only piles I've ever been are always going to be on the hockey rinks, and I think that's the only thing I've ever danced at up there in Canada. You know, so I went to that big Edmonton pile that one time, and they had that. And then uh, was it a uh, um, oh what's the other one uh, Saskatoon? I went up there as well at First Nations up there. Yeah. So, uh, but but those ones are the only ones I've ever danced. I've always been on hockey rinks, man. Yeah, we do a lot of hockey rinks because our our weather here is kind of weird sometimes. So it's either raining or it's really cold sometimes. In the summertime, though, obviously you get the your full on power season, so it's good to have. Uh, some good outdoor powers here. But we, we have a small window of really good weather before it starts getting cold again. So um, that's why we go kind of hard with uh, our weekday powers as well, just jamming as much powers as we could. Yeah, yeah. And I, I've always seen that circuit, and I've always wanted to do that. That kind of seemed kind of intense. It's, it goes for, like, what, two, three weeks or something, just back-to-back powers? No, yeah, it'll go for two months, two <sighs> months straight of... Uh, weekend weekday weekend weekday um you talk about your knees buckling that's where it starts happening when you're just dancing all the time (laughs) yeah yeah and i imagine it's just a big giant convoy just from you know like the same people going from one pile to one pile and just like (laughs) you know duct taping up their ankles and you know just trying to get you know even you know like acclimated to dancing it that's got to be hard because you know you know, it's it's easy you know, we can say that, you know, here in Oklahoma because we dance, you know, every weekend and you have the week to kind of coast off. But dancing every single day for, you know, two months, that's got to be insane, brother. Yeah, it's super insane. And you know, that's where a lot of injuries happen but and a lot of repairs. You know, you're just repairing all the time on the road. But it, it's a fun time. That's the power of life for you. Heck yeah, heck yeah. Hey, man, well, I'm going to start off, you know, like, you know, I, I know, you know, like uh, I think I mentioned on the last show, you know, I started off dancing, you know, when I was two. You know, like uh, my my mom and my grandmother, uh, grandparents are actually watching me. And then they, you know, like uh, I kind of mentioned this last one, you know, they kind of lost me. And next thing you know, they looked in the arena and they actually saw me dancing with the men's fancy war dancers. And that's kind of, that was my start. You know, all I had on literally was just a baby diaper and my baby bottle. And I was out there just jamming out. So I'm going to kind of kick it to you. Like, man, how did you start? Like the, how did you start in this, this arena? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I grew up where, you know, my parents kind of left me. um, And so I grew up with aunties and uncles. They became my mom and dad. Um, I I grew up in two families. My first family was, you know, very loving. They were kind of like rodeo people as well. I went to rodeos. I I got to ride sheep and things like (laughs) that. And um, my second family, I was um, very fortunate because my late uncle, he was very cultural. He was a you know, sweat lodge holder. He took us to sun dances, round dances. And in the summertime, it was uh, powwows. And I, my first powwow was about eight years old. <clears throat> and I I remember I, I was going, I heard this loud cheer at the arbor during the day. And I was very curious, I was like, what's going on over there? I ran over there. And for me, I say it's the first time time slowed down for me. I, I seen all these men fancy dancers, and I, I was just in a amaze, amazement. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I ran back to my uncle. I was like, man, what is this? I, I see these dancers dancing. He's like, son, that's a men fancy dance. And then I, I remember I, I went home. I, li- I lived by a lake, and I went and gathered all the seagull feathers I could find, and I, I made a, a pair of dance sticks from just materials on the res, you know, sticks and strings <laughs> and those feathers. Yeah. And uh, I went to, I went and grabbed my uncle's bingo dabber collection and I made my first pair of uh, dance sticks. I, I just bingo dab these uh, seagull feathers to different colors. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Uh, I just started practicing every day. My, my brother Nathan was a grass dancer and he kind of taught me the basic steps and it wasn't until my 13th birthday. So, you know, f- about five years later where, went for a walk to this guy's camp and I remember them opening the trunk and my uncle brought out this fancy dance outfit that was my birthday present and uh, it was on soon <laughs> after that so I started dancing in my teens 13 yeah it's keen brother man you know 
Like, uh, right. it, it, I've seen, you know, on YouTube and stuff like that, you started, you know, kind of helping people out. You kind of got little bit uh, tutorials on there kind of showing you like, your different styles of moves and you kind of like named them and stuff like that. And I ain't going to lie, you know, I kind of like, oh, man, that's how he does that. So I kind of watched him and kind of practiced and you know, just, just kind of stealing one move here and there. But I do appreciate, you know, you putting those out there and it, it is keen, you know, because you know, it's sometimes, you know, we, we have to, you know, it's always like powers. You always give back and I can see, you know, you're kind of showing people that kind of helps out stuff. Like even me, like I said, I'm stealing a couple of moves and stuff, but you know, I'm going to ask you, you know, kind of, you know, you have your own unique style, you know, which every, every war dancer out there, you know, fancy dancer has their own unique style. What was your kind of inspiration for your style? Yeah, I, uh, I, I think every dancer tells a story, uh, so before I got dancing, I was really into uh, break dancing. Uh, I was a track and field athlete, so I just I love the athleticism of, of speed and showing like your how fast you are, how high you could jump, and you know you mix that in with a uh, little hip hop and break dancing. That was my base before I even started dancing was those two things, and I think you just use the tools that you you got, and so. Uh, <clears throat> I would put in some break dance moves when I, when I'm dancing, and uh, <clears throat> some of my friends, uh, Dustin Strongarm, Preston Little Pet, they were kind of out there, you know. They did different styles, cartwheels and kicks, and I, I kind of took to that. I was like, man, that's cool. I like this funky style of just being free out there. And then one one year, uh, Poncho Brady came down or came up to Canada in Thunderchild, and. I, I got blown away by his footwork and his kicks and his spins. And I was like, man, that's so cool. Um, and I just thought like, man, I need to be like the flashiest uh, person. I want to, I want to do kicks. I want to jump up. I want to do flips. And I, for like the first, I don't know, two, three, four years of doing it. I remember I was getting a lot of, uh, you know, don't do that. Why are you touching the ground? I'm not supposed <laughs> to do cartwheels. And, yeah. <laughs> you know, I was getting a lot a lot of that. But something would just happen when that drum took off where I, it's almost like I couldn't control my body. I just, it, it just took, I, I loved so much the reaction of the crowd when I do something crazy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, yeah, that's what got me going. And I just started building off of that over and over again. Right on, right on. Yeah, I'll give a shout out to the great pa, uh, Poncho Brady out there, man. Uh, I, I remember watching that guy. That guy was wicked. Uh, he had so many moves. I, wa I watched him at Skmitson. He came down for Red Earth and you're dancing, dancing champions. It was awesome, man. I, I don't, I don't know if you were there, uh, at Red Earth when you actually put that spotlight on him. You know, he had that white and green outfit, and it just, it, it, uh, the, it, the, it yeah. almost looked like it looked neon. But man, he did some wicked moves. Yeah. I remember I kind of stole a couple of moves there as well too, but I can't do as much. But he, there was a downbeat, man. He, he did the splits on every single downbeat and hopped up, you know, between the downbeat, and he did it all in a circle. And I was, just, I was like. I blew my mind. I was like, man, <laughs> there's no way. And then, you know, like uh, he did a crow hop and did the exact same thing. He did, uh, I think, the one whole verse just nothing but crow hopping all the way around the arena. And I was like, man. And then I knew this guy was strong because, you know, you could look and you can kind of see, man, dude, his legs are just huge. And I knew he that guy had to be running and <laughs> doing squats and you know man he was he was he was insane dude he he was a wicked dancer so still is too i, I saw like he's actually coming back out so that's the scary part <laughs> yeah exactly shout out to the poncho heck yeah man yeah I was, i'm still scared of you i just want to put it out there but hey i appreciate you know i always shake hands he's always pretty cool to man uh hey gonna ask you this uh on beats you know preference you know what is it what's that you like now you know because you know you you know like you you've been all over the stuff and you know all over the place uh what's your preference you like northern you like southern songs yeah i'm, I'm definitely uh a northern dancer that's that's how i that's my base that's my my foundation of who i am but you know when i i absolutely love dancing the southern uh i i, I know it feels weird that when i'm doing it i feel like an imposter you know like <laughs> <laughs> who is this guy trying to dance the southern style but i i i love it i love that i love you know where the beat just nice and smooth in the beginning it doesn't take off like a northern and you can just kind of work on your body and your movements and your rocker. 
and being smooth and then I like how it just kind of picks up you know slowly slowly but it picks up and goes nice and fast at the end but uh, I'm definitely a northern dancer but I, I love that too because of it yeah, it's a uh, southern song's got that crescendo. You know, it goes slow. They want you to show your moves off, and then at the end, you know, it's like, it's you know, there's you know, that's when you got to turn nitrous on, and hopefully that engine check light don't come on, and you just got to go for it. You know, so. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> but that's the thing is if you ever watch me when I'm up there in Canada with you guys, you know, it's like I, I never do the splits on, on stops because, uh, man, I'm going to be honest, like uh, Northern songs kind of got a different beat. You know, I'm not I'm not acclimated to them. So a lot of times and I, I've been up there, uh, I think I had a tie off with uh, oh, what's his name? Um, Tatusis. Uh, but I ended up stopping. Like, man, I, I, I thought I had that tie because it was me and him. And I ended up just dropping down, doing the splits, and it was like, don't, don't, don't. And I was like, ah. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, but, yeah, but I, I didn't blow on that tide just because, you know, I wasn't used to that beat up there. You know, it's, it's a different flavor. It's a different flavor. So, hey, man, um, <clears throat> going, going through this, you know, long, you know, you, because you've been always in the spotlight and here and actually, you know, won a lot of accolades, and there's been a lot of, you know, like uh, actual contests you've been in. Who's your toughest drum you've actually had to go against? Yeah, uh, probably like a, a Wild Rose. <laughs> he you ain't lying. Like Washington area. Uh, they always got some real tricky songs, and they always seem to be making new songs, you know, so it's <laughs> kind of hard because you'll study all their songs, and then when you go there, all of a sudden they bust out two new ones, you're like, what? <laughs> um <laughs> So definitely like a Wild Bros. Uh, you know, I always love when Northern Cree uh, busts out some new songs because they're always pretty tricky the way they sing their songs. Um, but yeah, we get all uh, a lot of the Northern drums up here. Um, not too many of them are like fancy dance focused, right? So a lot of times when we go down south, where we get like a Motown, you know, Motown will bust out some really cool, tricky songs as well. Those are always tough, but. I'm a student, you know, especially now. I started singing uh, Paolo uh, maybe about two years in now where um, I'm starting to really focus on structure and how people sing and, like, their melodies and when they're going to stop. So I'm starting to get get them a lot better now once you can get a, a formula of how people make songs and sing. So getting a little better at catching even new songs, which is really good. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to give a good shout out to Wild Rose out there, also Motown and, you know, all those songs, all those song uh, uh, writers out there. Man, you guys got some wicked songs. And man, sometimes, you know, it's like I'm out there and um, I'm going to admit, you know, I've been up to, you know, Idaho and you know, I danced with, against Wild Rose. And I think I was in senior adults, and there wasn't even that many of us, and they still gave us a wicked song. <laughs> blew me, blew my moccasins off. <laughs> I was like, I, I was like, God dang it, man! Because <laughs> it was like, do 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 do. I was like, oh, what the heck, you know? But I'm not used to that with southern songs down this way. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go from this, you know, like you've been one of those kind of innovative dancers that kind of stepped out of the realm and stuff, and you know, it's something I'm gonna be able, gonna be honest, you know, I probably being I'm six two, I'm kind of a little bit tall, you know, it's it's kind of a big fear for me that you know if I did this, I don't know if I could stop, but you know, you do this front flip every now and then, man, and it, it shakes the crowd. Everyone goes nuts for this, you know, and it's it's kind of like you know it's a move that you know I think you're probably one of the only people out there that do. What inspired you to do this front flip? Yeah, it, I I learned it when I was playing soccer, you know, I did the, what do you call those, the front flip throw-in of the soccer ball. Oh, okay. And, uh, yeah, I was drilling that a lot of times uh, when I play soccer, and then and when I'm out on the field, I just do front flips, and and then I just decided one day, I was like, I wonder if I could pull this off with, a, <laughs> uh, with some muscles on. And, uh, actually, you know what, I never drilled it, I never practiced it, and, you know, at my camp, or or while I was practicing, I just one day out of adrenaline said, you know what, let me just try it out. The downbeat is coming. And uh, sure enough, I just closed my eyes and just <laughs> went for it. And I remember the crowd kind of like being really confused because they're, 
I remember they came up to me afterwards. They're like, hey, did I, did you just do a front flip? I wasn't sure what I saw. They, right? they were real confused because they'd never seen it before. And then I was like, yeah. And they're like, what? This is like before, like, we're, we're you know, every video is on YouTube and things like that. So you get a little crowd coming up to you. And then I'm just like, man, I'm going to, I'm going to keep trying this. And being, I, I'm 30, 38 now. And so I've done it so many times where it's like second nature now. Like if I want to bust it out for a downbeat, um, and I want to get the crowd going, I, I could bust it out. So, uh, it, it was more of just like in the, in my mind trying to be uh, innovative of my dancing, trying to be like, you know, what else could I do? And it was just one of those moves that, uh, uh was a, a hit for, for my dance style anyway. So. Yeah, that's keen, man. It was like, when I, I, you know, I think it was, it was years and years and years ago. I think we were at, me and you were at Morongo and you busted out at Morongo. And I was kind of worried for you because, you know, Morongo, I think we were on concrete. And I was like, man, this guy's going to split his head open. <laughs> but I'm going to watch. I'm going to see what happens. <laughs> but I, I had the whole attention to help him picking you up. You know, it's like, if he goes down, I'm going to go out there and pick him up. <laughs> <laughs> oh man i remember you busting out at morongo man that was pretty crazy but yeah it was pretty cool so you know you have a traveling partner you have your uh significant other you know your wife she travels with you with your entire family and stuff now i'm gonna ask you some hard-hitting questions your has your wife ever got mad at you for missing a stop <laughs> she got mad at me for for missing a whole contest <laughs> oh wow <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like uh, I'll I'll go for a nap sometimes, and one time at Dakota Dunes, pal, I I slept right through contest. <laughs> I woke up, I went running out there, and I was like, "Oh man, I missed my whole contest!" But um, no, me missing stops is kind of a laughing matter. Like we'll 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 joke about it when we get back to camp. They're like, oh, you better study that song for next time because they really got you. Um, but yeah, I I miss a lot of stops. I. I I, I get injured out there. All kinds of stuff happens. You know, um, sometimes my moccasin goes loose, or our outfit gets loose. But um, it, it's all it's all good fun. You know, I, I don't take it as serious as I, I used to, and uh, more for the health of it now, dancing. But still like that competition part. That's what drives me to like make sure I'm, I go all out with my dancing, and it helps push you a little bit better to to dance a little harder. But um, Right now, the last few years has just been like, just like, let's have fun out there. Heck yeah, heck yeah. And you know, I've kind of gotten that way too since I've gotten a little bit. I hate just like I said, I every time I come on this show, I always say I hate saying that I've gotten older. And this is like the third, uh, fourth episode I've actually said the exact thing. I hate getting older, but you know it is. You know, but I'm I'm still trying to train. You know, like I'm, I got my daughter here. She's actually here online with us. Uh, say hi, Emma. Hello. <laughs> So uh, she's actually training hey, with everybody. me. <laughs> uh, you know, I got her out running, hey. so she she runs with me and stuff like that. So let me ask you this: what you, what, what's your training secret? So you know, to actually tells people out there how do you get your front flip down and stuff like that? How how can they train like you? Yeah, for me, you know, it, it starts with what, what we're eating. Um, I fast every day, so I, as soon as I wake up, I, I don't eat till about four p.m. I'll have a my first meal to break my fast and that just keeps me like you know not being overweight uh, um so I, I eat i eat a lot of i eat less i don't drink any any pop or anything like that it's mainly water but if i do happen to have a, a pop it's like a you know a few sips of a coke zero or something like that but barely you know i don't really drink any pops but um <clears throat> and then yeah we train as a family um you go for for runs um we have a, a family pass together to our fitness center where you know I, I grew up as a track and field athlete and in uh, university track and field so I, I remember all those speed drills that we did and all the cardio drills conditioning drills and so I'll, I'll run my family through things like that and as my bo my boys are getting older um, I, I put them through some strength training at the at the weight room but um, I think the majority of our training is just dancing. You know, we'll, we'll open up the space, throw on some music, and um, go through some drills, and just make sure that our our uh, our movement and our 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 moves 
becomes second nature. So you don't have to think about it, you know. So I'll teach my my younger son Ari some combos, and we'll just drill them out over and over again. So when he he does it on the dance floor, those combos are already been drilled out, you know, a hundred times where it just happens naturally when he's out there. So we do that, and you know, throughout the winter. Uh, I run a company called Palo Times, and so we get a lot of shows where we're always dancing, and that kind of keeps us in that shape, keeps us in that frame of mind. Because then I know sometimes in the winter, uh, you know, you get into different modes, you know, hockey mode or sports mode, or maybe you're just chilling on the couch, Netflix mode or whatever. <laughs> um, but my, our, our family kind of, we dance throughout the year because of our company, do a lot of shows for schools, for organizations, um, or tourism, traveling, all, all kinds of things like that. So kind of stay in good shape year round. Right on, right on. Now it's a double edged blade, you know, you know, you got your sons there. They dance fancy too. Mm-hmm. Oh, so well, you know, you're showing uh, them the moves, like, man. You know, one of these days they're gonna be asking for a shot <laughs> of the title. <laughs> no, definitely. They're they're really green athletic dancers. Um so two of my boys are, are fancy dancers. My my oldest boy, he's a, a chicken dancer, an awesome, awesome chicken dancer. And so uh, they they're actually my motivation of of going to Palos nowadays because uh, sometimes um, you know I I like to chill now for so you know and I like to do gigs during the summers, but they want to go Palo and they want to go compete. And I'll be like, all right, let's go. And I love watching them dance. Yeah. It's great. That that reminds me of a Father's Day card, you know. You'll probably get this, you know, if you're teaching them fancy. It's like, you know, it's like that Father's Day card. It opens up and it says, you know, uh, every day, you know, you're getting older and weaker. I've been working out. Happy Father's Day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's one of these days he's going to come after that title, man. That's going to be keen. But, you know, it's always awesome to see, you know, our, our, our you know, like our, our uh, offspring kind of, you know, like uh, pursued powwows and, you know, kind of like how we did. You know, I got my Emma here, you know, she she's dancing fancy shawl, you know, so and, um, you know, like now, you know, just like you, you know, we, we run and uh, kind of work out. And so it's pretty keen, you know, just to actually have that uh, that time together, you know, with um, with them and stuff. <clears throat> So without yeah. um, you know what's going, what's up next for uh, Patrick? What you got coming down the pipe? What's new for you? <clears throat> yeah, we uh, you know our our company Power Times hosts a Power every year. We're on our fourth annual coming up in October, so we really grew this Power. It's one of my my babies that I I love to give back to the community because we raise a bunch of money and just give it all back. Um, you know, we have an award-winning powwow museum exhibit that's been traveling around. So uh, we do a lot of hosting of that. And new museums are, are picking it up. We're hoping to get it to Tokyo, Japan, at the Canadian Embassy there. Um, I create a lot of digital products. Uh, we have our Cree program, our language program that's out there. It's been it's been popping off. Uh, we're shipping nationwide. Uh, even in the United States, you know, there's a lot of Cree people down there, I guess, that they're they're buying our books, um, and I'm creating a grant writing course uh, with how to how to do grants with AI. Uh, I'm doing a I'm actually doing a fancy dance master class that will be a, an app that um, I just want to give to to the next generation of, of kids. Uh, so that they'll be able to access that. We got our bustle workshop digital course that's free online. Um, yeah, and there's a lot of things like that where creating more digital products and and uh, crypto, you know, I do a lot with crypto and helping our people invest um, and showing them what that's all about. So do a lot of a lot of that stuff. But um, I set my life up so I could be uh, have a lot of freedom to just focus on being indigenous and, and powwow and go to ceremony and teaching my boys how to do the same thing. So that's that's. That's what's up for me. Been busy being an entrepreneur, being an artist, and being a dad. Right on, right on. And you know, if people want to get a hold of you, and as far as you know, your companies and stuff like that, how how can they reach out to you? Yeah, usually uh, people hit us up on our our Palo Times Facebook page, or we have our email there uh, on our pages uh, to hit us up at right. info at palotimes.ca. That's where a lot of companies kind of reach out to us for collaborations and partnerships, and things like that. 
Yeah. Right on, right on. <clears throat> now, you know, you got this new generation coming up, stepping up in the, you know, the men's war dance and stuff like that. Uh, you know, what do you think of this new uh, generation that's coming up right now? <laughs> I remember uh, I was dancing with Lazarone when I was a young, young buck coming up. And he's like, man, you new guys are, you know, you're bouncing all over the place. You're going really fast. It's hard to catch up. And I, I was just smiling because I really looked up to Lazarone as a, as a fancy dancer. And then I remember dancing last year and I was dancing and I was watching, you know, I just kind of uh, had a surreal moment where I, I was just watching these younger dancers bounce all over the place. And I had that same, <laughs> that same thought. I was like, man, these young guys, they, you know, they got fresh young legs. They, they got some fresh lungs. They're, they're good to go. <laughs> they got um, good knees. But, <laughs> <laughs> they got, they got good knees. They're not clicking or anything yeah. like that. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but I just, what was told to me, you know, just t- take care of this dance, take, love it, you know, take, take care of it and it, it, it'll take care of you. And I, I got to experience that uh, full on, you know, this, this dance has taken me around the world. It helped me start a company, uh, helped me give back to community. Um, and if you treat it right, you know, it'll teach you a lot of life lessons. It, it taught me leadership taught me how to give back, taught me how to be a good father, uh, taught me how to live a healthy, uh, sober lifestyle, and, and it taught me how to, like, just really, even though, you know, fancy dancing is not really part of our, uh, where I come from, um, there was hardly any fancy dancers around, but it, it taught me how to, you know, be proud to be Indigenous and, and to learn my language and learn my culture, learn my ceremonies. And uh, that's what I mean. If you take care of this dance, it'll, it'll really take care of you. And I got to experience that to the fullest. And I'm very grateful for, for powwow and the lifestyle of it. And uh, the next generation, I'm hoping they, they take on a mindset like that and, and it'll, it'll be good for you. That's my my message to the young generation. Right on, brother. Right on. Well, shoot, man. Uh, once again, I want to thank you for coming on my show. You know, Sounds of the Power Grounds. You know, I want the best and the biggest for you, you know, in your future and with your companies. You know, it's always an honor, you know, to dance with you, brother. You know, and, you know, some sometimes, someday soon, you know, we'll be in that circle together. But, you know, like like I said, it's always a pleasure. You know, you've always been, you know, good with me, and, you know, talking with me and, you know, having that brother camaraderie, you know, that's always been awesome with you. Um, you know, and I, I do appreciate, you know, like our time. You know, our jokes and stuff up there in Canada. We had some fun times up there. But uh, yeah, it's always a pleasure, brother. But, you know, I want to thank you for coming on our show. I hope. Thank you, man. Yeah, thank you, brother. Get that dummy in and ask him. Uh, hi, hi. Oh, oh. Talk to you soon, man. All right. We'll see you later, bro. Well, that was our special guest for today. You know, this is uh, episode four, episode quattro, number four. Uh, I want to thank everyone out there for tuning in. And, you know, I want to thank Emma Lone Lodge for coming on the show. Uh, you got any shout outs yet? You want to say hi to your grandma, anything? Your grandma in Wisconsin, your mom, you want to say hi or anything? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> She's getting used to it, people. So don't worry. She's probably going to be taking over the show later on, you know, when she gets comfortable and stuff. But I want to thank everyone for tuning in. And hey, you know, like I mentioned, you know, if you got any power flyers, you know, you want me to bring any po- people up here on, on the podcast, send them my way. You know, send them to jrlonelodge at gmail.com or hit me up on Facebook. And this is the end of episode four. So thank you guys for tuning in. Aho. Thanks so much. <laughs>